Welcome friends, in this video let's discuss about the political organization, family, social division, rituals and philosophy during the later Vedic period. So this video is a continuation of the previous uh, video series and the popular assemblies as as I was mentioning in the uh, previous video, uh, lost importance. Okay, royal powers increased at the cost of Sabha, Samiti, Vidatas during the later Vedic period. And women were not permitted to sit in the Sabhas and these Sabhas were now dominated by the nobles and Brahmanas. And women were not were also accorded lower status during the later Vedic period when compared to the men. So that is important here. And role of rituals in strengthening king's influence. Here, the king performed various rituals to upgrade his social status, to establish legitimacy uh, in the minds of the people, and also uh, to gain popular support. So here, the king performed various sacrifices. Among these, the most important thing are Rajasuya Yaga, Ashwamedha sacrifice, and Vajapaya sacrifice. Okay? Here, Rajasuya sacrifice means uh, the king was supposed to confirm supreme, confer supreme power uh, after performing the Rajasuya sacrifice. Even today, uh, some of the politicians perform Rajasuya Yaga to gain political ambitions. So, so is the intensity and belief in the Rajasuya Yaga. Okay, so Ashwamedha sacrifice, the meaning of his, this is that uncon unquestioned control over an area, okay, over a territory, unquestioned control over a territory uh, in which royal horse ran uninterpreted. So here the idea is that the royal horse was made to let loose into another king's territory. So if that royal horse was not questioned, was not interrupted, then that territory was considered as the king's own. Okay. So if the royal horse was interrupted, then the wage was uh, the war was waged against that king, and the situation continues like that. So the Vajapaya Yaga, next important uh, uh, Yaga is the Vajapaya Yaga. Here the chariot race uh, was performed. In that race, the royal chariot was made to win the race against the king's men. So this increased the prestige of the king among the minds of the people. So these were some of the sacrifices were performed by the kings and the collection of taxes become mandatory. So this became common and deposited with an officer called Sangrahitri. The king was assisted by the special class of officers called priest, commander in chief, queen and other higher functionaries. Priests used to provide the philosophical guidance to the king. Commander in chief assisted him in, in the uh, war operations, and chief queen and other higher functionaries assisted him in other different administrative functions. Okay, at the lower level, the administration carried out by the village assemblies. Okay, the administration was carried out by the village assemblies. So the most important part of this video is that the social organization during the later Vedic period. So this is important. You can you can quote this uh, in your mains examination or in the essay paper or ethics paper. So this is important. During the later Vedic period, the society was divided into four Varnas called Chatur Varnashrama. Okay? This division was unequal based on uh, the birth. Okay, The four Varna that is Brahmins, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. Okay? So, Brahmins occupies the topmost position in the ritual hierarchy. Okay, topmost position in the ritual hierarchy, and they perform sacrifices and various prayers to the common people and also the king. In turn, they get the gift from the people and also the king. Okay, so Kshatri occupies the second important position in the ritual and social hierarchy. So there was always a conflict, struggle, and fight between the Kshatriya and Brahmin uh, to gain the topmost position in the society. Okay, so that is one of the reason for the establishment of Jainism and Buddhism. Okay, uh, because the Jaina, the Mahavira and Gautam Buddha were uh, once the Kshatriyas. So they rebelled against the priestly domination and established Jainism and Buddhism as an answer to the Brahminical domination during the later Vedic period. So Kshatriya usually occupies the second position and Vaishya the third lowest position. And they were the merchants and landowners and agriculturists. They, pro they provided the taxes to the king. And they provided maintenance for the Shudras and other uh, clans. Okay, So the Shudra occupies the lowermost position. And they were meant to serve the remaining three Varnas. That was the belief at that time. And they were imposed various disabilities. Uh, like not to uh, profess various occupation. Not to uh, study. Uh, not to study Vedas. 
and 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 study Gayatri Mantra. Okay, so they were denied upanayana ceremony. So various disabilities or uh, were imposed on Shudras. So this was the division of the society during the later Vedic period, which was unequal. Okay, unequal and unethical. And here, uh, this this this. Uh, Chetuvarna Ashrama traces it, its rudimentary origin from the Rigveda itself. In Rigveda, a hymn called Purusha Sukta, a hymn called Purusha Sukta, Purusha Sukta was mentioned. In that Purusha Sukta, uh, the cosmic being called Purusha was sacrificed to for the creation of the universe. The cosmic being called Purusha was sacrificed for the creation of the universe. So the topmost, that is the head of the purusha was sacrificed for the creation of brahmanas so the head means thinking intellectuality so the priests uh, were given the topmost position for for guidance of the society uh, to gain the moksha and also to gain knowledge and the hands represents the kshatriyas the hands and shoulders represent the strength they were of the responsibility to protect the state or kshatriya represent the arms okay the thighs were represented by the vaishyas so thighs means the hard work so they they involve in business activities agriculture and they provide the taxes to the kings and also give to the give to the priest and also they support the kshatriya kshudras okay so the feet represent the shudras the lowest lowermost position in the ritual hierarchy and they were meant to serve the remaining uh, three varnas. The belief is that, and they were imposed various disabilities because they were given the lowest uh, ritual hierarchy. So that is the meaning of this uh, Chetuvarna Ashrama. And the origin is from Rigvedic Haim called Purusha Sukta. That is uh, the sacrifice of the Purusha to create the universe. So that is the theory here. And um, this was discussed in my previous slide. And the Top three varnas, that is the Brahmin, Kshatriya, and Vaishya, uh, shared one common feature, that is they were entitled to Upanayana ceremony. That means the sacred thread were accorded to them according to the Ved Ved Vedic mantras. So they were considered as twice born. They were born, born once at the time of their birth, and second during the Upanayana ceremony. So this ceremony was denied to Shudras. The, it was not allowed to the uh, Shudras. And Shudras were also denied recitation of the Gayatri Mantra, study of Vedas, and they were denied entry into the heaven, moksha, and all the disabilities were imposed against the Shudras during this period. That is important. So you can mention that uh, in uh, uh, your essay topic to mention about the inequality which were existing, existing against the uh, scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and oppressed classes since past ancient time okay so that was the theme of this and family let's look at the time family the family's power increased during this period okay so in princely family the king's family the right of promiscuitor was getting stronger okay and male ancestor was worshipped the female ancestors were neglected during this period and gotra exogamy was appeared during this period Okay, exo means outside, gamma means marriage. Marriage outside the gotra is the meaning of gotra exogamy. Okay, so here gotra means a cow pen, a cow shed, or a place where cattle belong to the whole clan was kept. So here the gotra considered as the people of the same gotra was considered as uh, descendant from the common ancestor. So the descendant from the common ancestor means they were considered as brothers and sisters. So the marriage within the Gotra was denied to them. So the, so is the concept of Gotra exogamy. Even though they didn't know about them, even though they were distant, if they considered as of the same Gotra, the marriage was not allowed within the Gotra. So that, that was the concept here. And the another important philosophical thing is that ashramas. Okay. The man has to, the human being has to uh, pass us through four important stages in their life, according to this uh, philosophy. These four important stages are Brahmacharya, Grihastha Ashrama, Vanaprastha and Sanyasa. Okay? Brahmacharya, the stage uh, starts from the four year to, to 18 or 20 years. Okay? In this Brahmacharya stage, the youth uh, studies in the Guru's Ashrama 
okay and the, all the vedic, vedic text and all the uh, learning were done in the guru's house itself or in the ashrama so this is the brahmacharya the strict asture life had to be followed in the brahmacharya and after attaining the adulthood the person enters the grihastha ashrama that is the marriage the life of a of a householder in this grihastha ashrama various uh, various responsibility were performed by the by the men uh, to 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 perform various sacrifices and also to support sanyasis and brahmacharis okay and after certain period after say 40 or 45 years uh, the grihastha ashrama the men used to travel to forest and come back to the house to gain certain knowledge and to get ready for the sanyasa okay to get ready for the sanyasa so vanaprastha is the middle age to gain the wisdom and after attaining 60 years the sanyasa was performed was was, was attained and they that means detachment from all the worldly pleasure and also detachment from the family responsibilities to solely uh, find the pure consciousness and also to get the other three stages of life like like brahmacharyas agrastha ashrama and vanaprastha so the four important stages is this so that is the philosophy during this period and rituals and philosophy about this later vedic period was entirely under brahmanic influence and cult of sacrifice was central to this culture so the sacrifice gained preeminent position the brahmins uh, uh brahmins made elaborate rituals and they invented new and new rituals and sacrifices uh, to increase their prominence during this period okay so let's look at the changes during this period the indra and agni the most important god during the early vedic period lost their importance and the prajapati that is the creator of the universe came into prominence and many many gods of the rigvedic period that is uh rudra and vishnu gained prominence during this period okay so rudra was the god of the animals and vishnu was the preserver and protector of the people so they gained importance and science of idolatry appear in the later vedic time itself and here the rituals gained also importance okay rituals continued to be recited but they are not dominant mode of worshiping sacrifice okay animal sacrifice gained importance okay sacrifice involving uh, killing of animals on a large scale was a practice during the later vedic period which was not present in the early vedic period okay and especially the destruction of cattle wealth cattle well, cattle was used for sacrifice on a large scale okay and guest was fed with the cattle meat okay go the guest was uh, called gogna that means one who fed on the cattle the name itself indicates guest was uh, served with the cattle meat and because of this indiscriminate destruction of the cattle uh, the agriculture was suffered during this period and brahmanical dominance was at its peak during this period uh, the formula and sacrifice were invented adopted and elaborated by the priests and brahmins so uh, if the common men common people uh, does not perform these uh, sacrifices they were denied entry into the heaven and moksha by these brahmins okay the brahmana claimed a monopoly of priestly knowledge and expertise they were of monopoly of the expertise of priestly knowledge so they gained the dominance and they exploited the uh, remaining three varnas okay they invented large number of rituals uh, for their own benefit and uh, for other reasons and towards the end of the vedic period strong reaction against priestly domination against the cult of rituals were developed so this resulted in the compilation of upanishads okay philosophical text around 600 bc because of the uh, rebellion against the brahmanical dominance so now let's look at the upanishads upanishads the meaning of it is, is that to sit down near someone and listen okay so these are the philosophical text which criticized the rituals and lays stress on the value of right belief and knowledge okay these upanishads criticized the rituals which were uh, of prominence in the later vedic period and they laid stress on the value of right belief and knowledge itself only value of right belief and knowledge is enough not uh, the elaborate rituals according to upanishads so upanishads are known as vedanta okay vedantas the meaning of vedanta is that uh, it means from one point of view is the end of vedas veda anta means end of vedas 
and other meaning is that they reveal the final aim of Vedas. Okay, they reveal the final aim of Vedas. There, thereby they they achieved the purpose of Vedas. Okay, they reveal the end aim of the Vedas. Okay, so totally there are one not eight Upanishads out of which eleven are prominent called Mukhya Upanishads. So these eleven are mentioned here. This is only for reference. Okay. You can mention some of these in your answer. It's not mandatory. Okay. Aitriya Upanishad. Okay. Bra Bradaranyaka Upanishad. Taitriya Upanishad. Okay. Chandogya Upanishad. Kena Upanishad. Isha Upanishad. Katha Upanishad. Mukunda Upanishad. This is important. So Satyamava Jayate, uh, which was uh, mentioned in the emblem of India, uh, was adopted from this Mukunda Up Upanishad. So in uh, prelims prelim examination, the question was asked about this. Mukunda Upanishad. So please be cautious while reading these important issues. The importance of Upanishad in society and political administration is huge because they emphasized the knowledge of the self or Atma and their connection with the Brahma. Okay, so this is the theme here, not any elaborate rituals and sacrifices. Some of the kings of, of that time, that is Panchala and Videha, they cultivated this type of thinking. Uh, from in the minds of people and created atmosphere for the creation of uh, for the reform of the priestly dominated religion. Okay, that was another the theme. And this Upanishads emphasize the changelessness, okay, changelessness, stability, indestructibility, and immortality of the Atma, okay, at the soul of the being. And this served the cause of stability. It was needed uh, at that time for raising state power. So it provided assisted the ruling class to entertain stability and to gain prominence for them. So at that time kings were depicted as gods or Brahma. So the Upanishads uh, preached the Atma, connection of Atma with the Brahma. So this fostered allegiance to superior authority that is king. So that is one of the reason. So it uh, supported the priestly uh, the domination of the king. Let's look at the quick comparison between the Vedic civilization, okay, the present civilization, and Indus Valley civilization, which I, I had discussed in my previous videos. Okay, the first, the source of this reconstruction of history is from archaeology in the Harappan civilization. Okay, various archaeological materials were used, and in the, in the Vedic civilization, the four Vedas provided a rich account of about the Vedic civilization. Okay, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Atharvana Veda. So the original inhabitants, inhabitants were the origins for the Harappan civilization. Here in Vedic civilization, uh, the people migrated from the Central Asia, Indo-Aryans were the reason for Vedic civilization. Here in Harappan, the urban settlement were, was major, but here it is rural and proto-urban settlement. The source of economy in Harappan civilization was agriculture, trade, both internal as well as, well as external, craft and other industries. But in Vedic civilization, initially it was pastoral in the early Vedic civilization and later it, it became uh, agricultural and cattle rearing, rearing, settled agriculture. And knowledge of iron was not known to the Harappans, but the, the culture was based on copper and bronze. But in later Vedic period, they used iron extensively. They used iron for extension of their influence and expansion. Uh, of agriculture, they cut the trees with the help of iron axes. Okay, this this uh, quickened their expansion. Next is role of horses is of little importance to the Harappan civilization, but horses were very very important for Vedic civilization because it was used in the warfare and in the movement from one place to another. They played a decisive role in their life. And pottery, the major pottery during the Harappan civilization is red and black ware. It was distinctive, and in Vedic civilization, it was painted grey bear pottery. So these were some of the important differences. Uh, if, uh, some questions may come to compare the Vedic and Indus Valley civilization. The mains examination. This come handy for you. Please to refer this. Uh, thanks for watching. Please share the video, like this video, and most important, like my Facebook page. That is facebook.com/slash UPSC General Studies. Okay, UPSC. General studies. General studies. Uh, link is also provided in the description box below. 
uh, go ahead and click that link and uh, like my Facebook page. Uh, please spread the word of, of free education. Thanks for watching.